What's up, everybody? It's Dove Carp, your friendly neighborhood fraud fighter. And today we're going to talk about the dreaded payment reversal. Let's say you're a clothing designer and you sell apparel online. You put blood, sweat and tears into creating, manufacturing and selling your items. The day finally comes where bing, a sale pops up in your Shopify account, then another and another. And you've got some serious revenue rolling in. You're thinking much bigger now, bigger business, bigger dreams, bigger spending, bigger. A few days later, you take your whole team out to celebrate. You're happy to pay that large bill because you just brought in a boatload of cash. You're flying high. But as soon as you get home, you see messages in your inbox. Charge back, charge back, charge back. The reason? Fraud. All the money you made is gone. Not only that, you have to pay additional fees for each chargeback. Cue intense music. What a nightmare. You lost the item and you can't get it back. All the costs of doing business are thrown down the drain. And you just spent a lot of money on your team just to realize you can't afford your credit card bill next month since all that revenue disappeared. That's because you are hit with a payment reversal in the form of a chargeback. But chargebacks aren't the only type of payment reversals. So today I'd like to speak about ways that you can prevent several different types of payment reversals from happening and keep your transactions smooth and secure. So what is a payment reversal on a credit card? Payment reversal is when a transaction is overturned and or the funds are removed from your merchant account and returned to the cardholder's bank account. This can be instigated by the cardholder, bank or merchant in three main ways. One, authorization reversal two, a refund, and three, a chargeback. An authorization reversal happens before funds are withdrawn from the cardholder's account. It's like slamming on the brakes before running through a red light. This can happen when the merchant finds out there's a problem with a specific payment and reaches out to the cardholder's bank to prevent the transaction from going through. An authorization hold can be put on the account to make sure there's enough funds to cover their transaction. Another example can be when a seller makes a mistake and accidentally charges the customer an incorrect amount, but swiftly reverses the charge without the customer knowing about the error. This is a solid option for merchants to avoid trouble since there's no fees, refunds, or product returns associated with it. The refunds are when a customer asks the company for their money back when they feel that the product or service doesn't quite meet their expectations. Like when my friend ordered a red couch, but it showed up green and the delivery guy said, who cares? I think it looks nice. It matches the curtains. And they were like, uh, no refund. In this case, you call, email, or message the company explaining why you want your money back. And in turn, you typically must return the item as well. This process can take on average between three to 10 business days for the merchant to refund your money by creating a new reverse transaction, sending money from the merchant bank account to the cardholder's account. Refunds also aren't cheap when you include the cost of lost sale, interchange fees, return shipping costs, etc. The, the financial toll can really accumulate over time. In a normal scenario, chargebacks are a last resort. The customer has been unsuccessful reaching out to the merchant and decides it's easier and more effective to file a dispute with their card issuer. Here, the card issuer withdraws the funds from the merchant account, circumventing the company. Then the merchant now has to respond to the chargeback claim by accepting it or fighting it. This is the worst option, but sometimes unavoidable, like when dealing with friendly fraud that's either accidental or malicious. In short, accidental being a charge that's not recognized, for example, and, and malicious is someone who wants to scam the system by ordering and receiving the product or service, then having their card issuer taking their money back with the hopes the company will give up and forget about it. Chalking it up to the cost of doing business, you know, you win some, you lose some, right? Mm, wrong. Chargebacks come with their own fees, lost revenue, lost merchandise, additional penalties, and a threat to your ability to process credit cards in extreme cases. Additionally, chargebacks follow a strict process and timeline. If you don't provide the exact evidence needed to overturn the dispute or you're a moment too late in responding, you lost and you're done. You can technically appeal the verdict, but oftentimes this becomes quite pricey. Now that you know the types of payment reversals, it seems like they're all bad for the merchant, right? Not exactly. Although the downsides are well known, a transaction reversal can actually benefit both the company and the customer by improving customer satisfaction and loyalty when applied carefully. However, when the banks get involved, it can be a much more painful 
and frustrating experience. So let's dive a little deeper into why people do these payment reversals. As we said before, some are completely honest mistakes. Others are a bit more malicious. Some common honest mistakes are the, the merchant charged an incorrect amount or multiple times for the same transaction. Uh, the customer is unhappy because the seller's product did not match the description on their website. The purchase order was out of stock or, or just good old fashioned buyer's remorse. Whereas more malicious reasons are the transaction was unauthorized or it was digital shoplifting. But don't worry, all hope is not lost. I'd like to give you some tips as to how to successfully deal with payment reversals by number one, preventing them from happening, and number two, addressing them when they get through your first level of defense. Here are eight actionable items you should consider to prevent payment reversals from hurting your business. One. Before submitting transactions, check all the details, including transaction identifier numbers, TID, and retrieval reference numbers. Number two, send orders for processing immediately after you've clarified details to avoid cardholder confusion on transaction authorizations. Number three, label your billing descriptors accurately to display your company's name, your URL, and a brief description of the product to avoid any confusion. Number four, use your order confirmation email to confirm the shipping and delivery dates so everything is clear about the order status. Number five, use incremental authorization for a strategic advantage if your business model requires periodic customer billings. Number six, process any authorization reversal promptly and immediately release the customer's funds to preempt disputes. Upset customers are bad for your chargeback ratio and just bad for business. Number seven, use the Surface Trace audit number, STAN, to track the status of a refund and prevent fraudulent charges by tracing unauthorized transactions, giving your customers much needed peace of mind. And number eight, prevent chargeback fraud with secure payment systems and anti-fraud tools. Okay, awesome Dove, we're happy you've helped us, but this seems a bit intense. Is there an easier way to deal with this? Why, of course. Thanks for asking, my friend. You can always check out Chargeflow's industry-leading chargeback automation system at chargeflow.io or reach out to me or my team because we would love to help you. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment, and share it with everyone in the entire galaxy because the more you do, the more great content we can put out for you. Until next time, keep fighting the good fight.